Hi guys, uh, welcome to Investing with JYK, and today we'll talk about copper. So I found this website called International Copper Study Group, uh, uh, and then they published this pretty nice um, slide deck that basically uh, introduces you to the basics of copper. And so I took a look at this and uh, um, I think we should just go through this together and it's quite interesting. So you got copper which is um, has some physical properties so first of all in terms of uh, conductivity of um, both heat and um, electricity it's below silver uh, above everything else. The next after copper is uh, aluminium and uh, it uh, Copper is heavier, but it's very um, conductive for both. And the price of copper is about like uh, $3 and a bit per pound. And silver is um, $16 per ounce. Right? So one pound, pound, two ounce you get 16 ounces. Oh, that's troy ounce, so it's that slightly um, troy ounce 14, so 15, around 15, right? So the price difference is essentially three times um, uh, it's, it's something like, oops, something like $16 divided by three times uh, 15, so you're looking at 80 times difference. So it is basically uh, infeasible to use silver when you need um, uh, conductivity and uh, um, of both heat and electricity. Obviously there are things that you can do to increase heat conductivity and then there are things you can do to increase electrical uh, conductivity but both of these are not uh, simple so you could do a heat pipe uh, um, or you can do like superconductors, but that one has to be cooled all the time. So if you want something that's cheap, you need copper. And because of that, copper is the uh, de facto use, like you use this for almost all the uh, conducting wires. Uh, in t uh, for example, your um, motor or uh, connectors, uh, PCB uh, wires, um, or anything like that. The one thing that might surprise you is a long distance electricity uh, transmission does not rely on copper. I think usually they have some kind of a steel core and a, a bunch of um, aluminium around it. So the steel core provides the strength so it doesn't sag as much. Copper is gonna just... Uh, copper isn't very strong. So steel provides the strength and then they wrap around a bunch of aluminium around it so to increase the um, cross-section and uh, to reduce resistance. So long distance power trans uh, uh, power transmission usually does not use copper. So that's one thing that I learned, I don't know where. Uh, but okay, so that's copper and it has some uh, nice um, uh, properties. And that basically is gonna later tell us how copper is gonna get used. So, oh yeah, these forgot about them but yeah so these it's very dense and um, th this is aluminum is like two 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 or three um, thousand uh, iron is like 5.6 if I remember correctly gold is about gold is either 19 or 13 I think it's 19 so yeah uh, and this is these nice properties you have uh, corrosion resistance, machinable form, uh, formable conductor of heat and in the conductor and heat transfer, and you know it's easy to to make. And that, that is actually very interesting. If you think about, you know, people say about like golden age, silver age, like and then you know, bronze age and all that. Really, the people started using gold because it occurs naturally. Um, uh, occurs naturally uh, in the environment, right? You kind of just mold it, and then you you have your gold uh, trinket. Uh, but in terms of copper, 
it's still very malleable, it's easy to work with, uh, but not as many of them uh, exist in its elemental form, as not as much. So you need like you need to make it into an alloy with zinc, and you need to extract and all that, so it gets more complex. So it's actually very interesting stuff, like why people start using gold, and they, then eventually they move to silver and 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 um, copper, and then iron, and iron basic changed everything. And yeah. Um, so these are just some stuff, uh, some definitions. It's kind of useful. Uh, you can check it out yourself. I'll post the link uh, in, in the video. Uh, this is some... Uh, yeah, Bronze Age. Actually, uh, <laughs> I actually didn't read this very carefully. But... Uh, so some funny thing. This guy, I think, is made by Alpha. This is a Japanese... Uh, this is quite interesting. I, um, I... I'm a software engineer and I liked computer ever since I was like a kid. So I was daydreamed about what kind of computer I would build, uh, what kind of CPU, what kind of um, cooler, and, and all that. And I used to memorize all the frequencies of all different CPU um, models and, and, and uh, graphics card models and even things like texture fill rate and crazy shit like that. But Back then, the alpha, they have these hexagonal um, fins, and it was very unique. This is like 2002 kind of stuff. So yeah, World Copper Fact two Fact Book 2017 with new copper applications being a 2002 cooler. Yeah. I think these guys are being lazy. All right, so here's something fairly interesting. You got the production is 20 million tons, and the capacity is, is just 10% more than that. All right, so reserve is uh, 720. So basically, if you divide reserve by the uh, the production, uh, you get your mine life. So the world mine life is about 36 years essentially. And if you, and then the capacity is the number that we should pay attention because they can always t uh, turn the production up to capacity, but to go beyond capacity, then um, you need to put up a bunch of capital uh, to, to build up the mine even more, expand the mine, and also takes time. So that's not easy, but to, to move up to capacity is fairly uh, simple. So that is a number. In terms of investment, uh, when you try to analyze the supply and demand, um, the supply can easily go up to here. Uh, okay, so these are just geographical areas, and um, uh, so th this talks about how people make copper. There's uh, different ways, and they have different cost characteristics. Uh, most of copper is just gonna copper mine is gonna be made uh, into copper concentrates, which is basically copper, iron, and some crap mixed together. It's like a third copper, third iron, and a third some random other crap. Um, and then you, for uh, to use copper, you need it in fairly um, pure form, like nine 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 like four nines or three nines of, of copper and uh, four electrical conductors and all that stuff. Yeah, here you got copper cathodes, which is like four nines. Right? And um, this just tells you there's a new way of making uh, copper, which is, uh, this is solution extraction and electro winning or something. I don't remember exactly. And production. Latin America has increased by huge in 50 years and what is it there it's Peru and uh, Peru and Chile Ta -da! Peru and Chile and surprisingly China is fairly high in there as well but this tells you something if these two countries which are fairly small um, get some kind of 
you know, either a flood or an earthquake or some way of disrupting uh, copper mining, the world will very suddenly go into a, a copper shortage. Um, right? you just imagine if Chile dropped by half, now you're at 3 um, million tons. Um, so the entire world was 20. So you're suddenly taking away uh, like a seventh, one seventh of the, like seven, you know, something like 15% um, uh, of, of the, the, the production, of the world production. So that is huge. So always keep those two countries in mind. And then also Peru isn't exactly politically stable. Chile is okay. And... Um, yeah, and Peru is also subject to to flooding quite often. The the I was in there, so the entire terrain just looked fairly prone to to flooding. Okay, so this is not very interesting in terms of investment, and this is interesting. So look at the the capacity of these things, right? And uh, the biggest is the Escondida, and uh, that actually is not owned by. Peru. It's mostly owned by BHP Billiton. Uh, for disclosure, I own quite a few of these. I of these names. I have uh, BHP Billiton, and I have um, Norios Nickel, and uh, I think those are the two. Yeah, those are the two that I actually own. Um, we talked. About, I mean, I talked about Nefson a while ago. It actually went up quite a lot, which is pretty nice but um, if you look at their upper zone the peak production will be around 200 kilotons right, so that is by at the peak of its production and it falls off very quickly if you look at this um, it will very quickly go down to about you know go below 100 so this is not a big mine uh, both in terms of reserve, and you can see the life of mine is only like 10 years. Um, these things are, some of these have 100 a year uh, life of mine. And um, the difference is, these, almost all these, I think, uh, are, are um, porphyries. So these are low grade, uh, so porphyry is a type of um, uh, rock. Uh, so I know this one is, I know this one is, um, I know this one is Big and Canyon, yeah, and Olympic Dam, and Mutan Mutanda is, I didn't know that, okay, so these are all porphyries, porphyries are usually gigantic, and, um, they can contain billions of pounds of uh, copper and um, they are typically under 1%. Escondida at the moment is like 0.6% or something in terms of grade. So low grade, gigantic, typically mined open pit. Uh, so that's actually one thing I got a bit confused with uh, Nevson because if you look at the way they describe um, they're, this is too big, can't deal with this. If you look at their lower, lower zone, right? So upper zone is easy because it's a massive sulfide, very high grade. You just do an underground mine. You do an underground mine with the, the thing we described in the previous, previous video. But if you look at their lower one, right? Look at this. Upper zone is so small, their lower zone is gigantic, lower grade, but it's like a thousand meters under under the ground. So are they gonna strip the entire mountain? Um, that is something I'm 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 wondering. Like it seems too big to not mine, it's too good to not mine, uh, too low grade for pure underground uh, underground mining, and also it's too large to do an underground mining. But it also seems too deep to do a 
an open pit because you have to remove all the surface so your strip ratio is going to be crazy so i don't know but you know it, it's a good it's a good deposit uh, it's just I don't know how they're gonna mine this. It's um, I, I'm not obviously I'm not a mining expert, but it, it, it's quite interesting how you have the this kind of stuff. Anyways, um, so this one talks about some constraints and basically it's capital and political in terms of like tree huggers and uh, yeah, capital and political. Are the most, most uh, you know, the two things. Secondary feed is basically recycled stuff. Um, okay, so this talks about how this now we're getting into copper smelting. Previous it was mining. Smelting, I don't know if it's a good business. Uh, most of smelting happens in China. Ta da! Asia. And guess what that is? Just China. Yay! It's even crazier than. Um, uh, Chile in, in terms of uh, mining China is uh, like 30% or some crazy shit so yeah so, uh, most of that is you know Hansi is Chinese and this is just um, uh, the process isn't very interesting as far as in investment is concerned uh, at least I don't see how they, these are interesting but if you're interested they just uh, these flash things are just flame basically you uh, you heat up air with lots of oxygen put the concentrate in the um, sulfur is going to react with uh, air and uh, iron will react with oxygen forming oxides oxides will then form slug and then they have two uh, they don't dissolve each other so copper mat which is like a low grade copper molten copper and uh, um, the the iron slug they don't uh, mix and then they also have different densities so you got copper down and then you got the iron slag you can like remove it on the top so you get a higher concentration of copper and there are quite a few of these um, ways but most common is this utukumpu flash I have no idea how to read that. Um, okay, so yeah, so I look at this as like okay, so it's not super interesting. It seems like copper smelting is gonna be uh, easy to to expand as well, even if you know China suddenly decide. Actually, it they will have a short term effect. Right? China banned import of copper concentrates um, that has a ar arsenic concentration of more than 0.5 percent that's a poison so that will have an effect in the world but I'm sure eventually we'll find a way to deal with arsenic um, yeah so again China makes most of the crap uh, so that's production uh, semi production semis is a short for semi fabricate semi fabrication so they don't make uh, like end consumer products so they you know a, a copper wire you don't buy copper wire um, copper wire goes into uh, other manufacturers right so so that's why it's called semi um, and then um, yeah that's China basically the big red bar Okay, so let's see. This is the very interesting part. So, what are what is copper used for? You got wire rods, basically wire. So that's for electricity. And you got tubes, tubes. So these are like um, water pipes, essentially. And um, you got foil. Uh, and this stuff is used for like PCBs and uh, even batteries. So I, I found, according, I have a, my, my, my wife's, uh, one of her relatives, it works in uh, manufacturing. He's like a, a partial owner of a factory. So they used to buy these, um, 
copper foil. And from this company, apparently, this Kingboard laminate is produced the best quality um, uh, copper laminates. And uh, and their mark, uh, their price went crazy, and it, it was insane. Look at this; it went from it went like three x. And even back here, he was getting he bought a bunch of this the stock, and he was getting paid like five percent, three percent dividend every year. And then he waited for five years, and it went crazy. And apparently, I didn't understand initially. Then I figure. Then I kept on checking. I figured out that this whole demand, uh, the, the this is just a commodity uh, business, right? So uh, you can get slightly better quality, but you know it's not like high tech. Uh, so this demand is all batteries and. Those batteries are all used in EVs, so it's 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 amazing how EV push would would um, make you a lot of money in a copper laminate uh, manufacturer. Is these things are just amazing. So every time I look at some kind of political push, um, I try to figure out who will benefit. Sometimes. The the push is the, the the effect is so far fetched, right? For example, in here it's air pollution, the Chinese air pollution, and the Chinese government then said, okay, we need uh, EVs and all the other stuff, uh, like uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, PV cells. But EVs, okay, EVs means battery. Battery means you need cathode. Cathode means you means you need. Uh, Laminates and the laminates apparently is uh, not a it's it, it's not a, a, a an industry with a lot of spare capacity, so it results in this huge price run. But obviously, I don't, I don't think it now is is too much too good of a um, a uh, investment because since they made a lot of money, people it's been two years since the EV demand came and people will be building it. So it's kind of late. And two years is enough to build most factories. So so yeah, just an interesting tidbit. Uh, and the others, alloy wire is basically wire. Powder, powder. PSS is plate sheets and uh, and strips. RBS is rods, bars, and, and uh, sections. So big stuff. Ingots is ingots. So talking about ingots, this this some stupid thing in 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 copper. So if you can actually buy copper bullion on eBay, and I'm like, huh? What? It's it's quite crazy. It's quite crazy. Ah. Uh. People never stop to, to, to amaze me. This <laughs> they, they buy copper bars as if as if this thing is gold. It's crazy. But okay, that's uh, yeah. So how does this help us, right? Uh, wire rod. So think about where that is being used. Um, most of that will be used uh, on connectors, electrical connectors. Um, EVs, if you want to make them more efficient, you would wound the um, the motors more densely. So that's how you increase both the power and, and efficiency. And the more copper you use, the less resistance there is, and the less waste um, there is in terms of electric electricity passing through these these wires. And the other things are. Uh, the the other drivers I see are, for example, the electrific electrification of your house. You know, let's say I have a I have a Google Home or whatever thing that's called. Every single piece of these stuff is copper. They they need copper inside. Uh, a a train a, an electrified uh, electrified train. Is obviously going to contain a lot more copper than um, 
you know, steam or diesel train. Yes, diesel, even diesel trains first have to convert that into uh, electricity. Most is diesel electric. So, but, but if you have a purely electrified train, that's even more copper. And if you have a high speed electrical electric train, uh, then it's double the copper. I, I remember reading that somewhere. It's, it's tons and tons of copper per train. And, and uh, as, as people you know, get more of these, China was using just a shit ton of copper. Again, this is, you know, China, USA, maybe there is a trade war. I don't know. It's, I, I hope there's no trade war. It's, I think trade war is the most stupid thing, but if it happens, I will try to make some money. <laughs> and uh, okay, so that's basically what you expect: uh, copper coming out of Chile going to China, essentially that, and then copper coming out from uh, Australia going to China. Ah, and this is basically Grasper. The this is um, uh, Indonesia. You got Grasberg, and this is uh, essentially Olympic Dam. And one thing I, I forgot to mention: Olympic Dam is is copper plus uranium. So Olympic Dam I must actually produce a lot of uranium. So that's one reason I like that mine quite a bit. Uh, and it is one important factor in the and why I decided to buy a BHP bulletin. And again, not extremely interesting stuff. Um, so let's see. So this is like supply demand. You're, we're getting into prices and supply demand and, and price curves. And this is a slightly out of date. So I found one that's more up to date. And this is stock, so inventory. When inventory is low, copper price is crazy high. Here, no idea what the hell happened. Currently, inventory isn't low. And price is not low either. So copper is not one of those commodities that you can just safely buy at this price. The way I think about it is, um, if you refer to my cyclical uh, industry investment, copper or copper producer uh, stock, you can buy them very safely when they are producing copper at below cost. They're selling copper at below cost. That's always a good sign because what happens then is Give it a couple of years, copper mines will disappear. And will people not use copper? Not likely. Right? Because this is usually you want better conductivity. For uh, an example is like in like around 2000, Intel replaced the connectors, uh, the wires in their CPU from uh, aluminium to copper. Right? So at some point, maybe they will use silver, but uh, um, at the moment, it's still copper. So people will want more conductivity, not less. Um, so yeah, as, as more and more things go to electricity, and electricity is obviously a nicer um, kind of energy compared to, let's say, fuel. You don't have to burn it on site. It's very, fairly clean and fairly high efficiency. Um, only problem is uh, storage is, is a bit uh, a bit annoying, but yeah. Uh, so you can see this. We're not at low price, not at low um, uh, inventory, and obviously inventory is both the exchanges. So that's London Metal Exchange or maybe Comex plus producers, and then you have like merchants. Really doesn't really register consumers doesn't really matter registers mostly just producers and exchanges yeah so that's copper and um, 
Uh, here it talks about the uses. You can see, you know, as you expect, you have the plates. Uh, a lot of them are used as uh, uh, anodes for like electro electrolysis and stuff like that. Wire, as expected, very good conductor, very malleable, so you can like wind uh, wind it, uh, and use it to make coins. Uh, but Coins is a thing though, they can always replace it, so you, they can always use less copper and put cheaper stuff like zinc into it, or even nickel. Um, actually no, zinc is zinc, yeah, nickel is more expensive, I think nickel is about 11k per ton, and uh, copper is like 6k per ton. I think I'm right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, motor. You know the the better motors always have more copper. Uh, your uh, PCB, and I, I think that's a train. Right, so growth of copper usage, and I think every time you get a recession, you should hit a dip. Yeah, here's a dip. Two thousand. Here's a dip. Early nineteen nineties, a dip. 80, this is when Volcker came out and said we're gonna break the back of um, uh, break the back of inflation. There's a dip and you can see this is eight, 1982 basically. 1982 is the bottom of the bear market. 75 that's the oil shock. Going back, forgot what the hell happened here. War is a lot of copper. Um, 1930 depression copper uh, is, a, is a reduction cop in, in copper usage. End of First World War, you can see the war, and then there's a bump here. The war, there's a bump here. Uh, end of First World War, this is basically when Germany went to shit, I think. 1923, 1920, I think 1923 is there. No, 1921 is the invasion of Ruhr by uh, Belgium and France because Germany refused to pay their war reparations and so basically that shut down the uh, a lot of the world uh, production. Uh, so yeah, but you can, it's very interesting to see what happens in these places and, and you, you try to correlate these dips um, with uh, yeah, correlating dips with uh, uh, with the, the the historical events. Very interesting. Anyways, um, refined usage, Asia, well, basically China, and hopefully, what, well, hopefully, um, India will take over, but for now. Interesting. One interesting thing about India is that they say most of the the villages are electrified, but the definition of being electrified is apparently the existence of electricity, but not consistent supply of electricity. So you can be electrified for one hour of a day, which is kind of useless. A lot of them are like that. A lot of them, I think, I read it somewhere that at least uh, this year, I read that something like 70% of the villages have electricity for less than four hours a day or something in, in, in India. So, you know, to, to build out that network, you will need uh, more copper, at least closer to the distribution, not the long distance um, transmission. And Africa is basically not using anything. Um, so yeah, that hopefully will increase. But once you build out the infrastructure, you need a lot of copper. But once you have the infrastructure built, uh, you basically stop consuming that much. Because uh, you know once you have the cable there, you kind of leave it there for quite a while. 
and uh, per capita is obviously increasing mostly it's not that the, the the Americans are using more and more copper per se yes they are but that's not the main driving force the main driving force is basically the other less developed countries catching up to the copper consumption and uh, and this is also uh, very interesting you can see that as uh, except from the, the the oil countries the further you move towards high um, GDP per capita the lower copper consumption per capita there is but at the same time if you think about th this is intensity Cap copper usage per GDP right so if you multiply uh, China is like 1,000 by uh, 10,000 so that's per person that gives you per person um, uh, copper usage in this case that should come out to about uh, um, this is in billions, but if we just ignore the units in terms of the, the, the magnitude, uh, you, you will get something like 10 million here, right? But if you multiply US, which is 55, around 55, by like 100, about around 100, you get um, slightly less. Yeah, you get a bit less. So maybe that means the the usage of China should should dec uh, decrease as uh, as it moves towards here. And currently, that's the main. China is the main user of copper in the entire world. As this as it moves to higher GDP per, per capita, maybe the total consumption will go down um, uh, per person. So I don't know. India is, uh, yeah, India is, is, is another thing. I think this just means India has horrible infrastructure. Um, not enough electricity. So this is an indication, to me, an indication of poor uh, infrastructure. Brazil has poor infrastructure. I know that. And, um, yeah, Mexico... I mean, in the among the Mexico city, uh, Mexican cities I've been to, it does look, in terms of infrastructure, is fairly poor, and maybe there's some tells you about the infrastructure levels. Maybe Vienna is has reasonable infrastructure. I don't know. Um, okay, so these are the uses. You know, yeah, all these windmills will have copper conductors in them, and, and all these um, motors, uh, and uh, uh, not just motors, um, engines will have copper wires to, to transfer signals and all that stuff. And uh, a couple of numbers, as uh, I think each uh, passenger car should consume about 50 to 70 pounds of copper. And if you go to EV, you basically go double or triple that number. And then EVs also need charging stations. These charging stations um, obviously is going to use copper because you don't need it to go very far in terms of the, the length of the cable. And um, you definitely want to reduce resistance because you don't want heating. And these EVs draw a lot of current. Um, an example would be... Um, you know the current uh, level two U.S. level two EV charges like six kilowatt, and at I think is around two forty, so six kilowatt divided by um, two forty V, so six thousand divided by two forty is two point five amps. That is quite quite 
high. Sorry, 24 amps. 25 amps. Yeah, that is very high. That is that is very high number. So you do you definitely want a very low resistance because um, the heat dissipation is essentially R I think it was R A, I think. It was just uh, R I. Resistance times current, yeah. So the, the the lower the resistance, the lower the heat is uh, lower the heat um, the generation in the wire, and then the um, larger the cross section. This is all proportional. Larger the cross section, um, the lower the resistance. Obviously, the higher the conductivity, the lower resistance. So they, people are not going to replace that stuff with with um, aluminium because otherwise you need gigantic, the like, really really thick um, cables. To, to avoid the heating up stuff. Oh my god, this is old as fuck. Semiconductors manufacturers have launched a revolutionary copper chip. <laughs> that that is that is literally like two thousand and two thousand one or two thousand two level. So was Pentium three um, copper mine? I think. Yeah, copper mine. Very funny, copper mine. Ah, that was the. That was when. Copper connector. They started using copper connector. This when was this release? This was, yeah, it was two thousand. Mining people really live in the past. This is insane. Revolutionary copper chip from twenty years ago, and revolutionary new copper use in heat sinks from twenty years ago. Like God. Um, transportation, where the transportation, the entire transportation system is changing in the world, where EVs and hybrid vehicles and all that stuff. So, copper usage should be going up. And uh, industrial metals, vessels, tanks, pipes. These won't increase that much. Um, you do want them. Oh yeah, another interesting tidbit was copper and uranium. Copper containers are used for nuclear waste, and the reason we use copper for that is uh, corrosion corrosion resistance. So you basically put a bunch of uh, plutonium and other stuff into a copper container, and then you kind of bury them very very deep, and hope that um, copper doesn't get corroded too fast and. Uh, uh, the, the, the radioactive stuff doesn't leak out as much. I mean, most of that radioactivity will go away in, in reasonable, you know, it should go away before the copper get corroded. And copper is not very reactive anyways. And you got coins and stuff. So, main uses. Asia, mostly just China. Both of these should keep steady. Americas and, well, at least North America and Europe should keep fairly steady. Equipment, building construction. So this is uh, a, a big risk. Uh, China has a property boom. Usually following a boom is a bust. So that. Uh, infrastructure, China has built a lot of infrastructure. So, but I think that can be uh, that slack will be taken up by other countries, probably India, Pakistan, or and China's been doing this one belt, one road thing, which um, basically they've finished building the Chinese infrastructure. They seem to be very interested in to build out the third world infrastructure. So transport that will increase a bit. I did a calculation. 
based on a projection of um, uh, there was a EV projection somewhere. I had a bunch of these open. Sorry, where is that? Global EV outlook. Yeah. So based on the EV projection, I took some projection to 2025, and um, it was something like, you know, 60 million cars or something. Let's say 60 million cars, 50, say 50 million cars, right? So 50 million cars, um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, multiplied by 150 pounds, let's say 125 to be conservative, uh, per car, that is how many pounds of copper that will go into um, EVs. Um, but obviously that's a little deceptive. We have to subtract the uh, normal ice, uh, the uh, internal combustion engine usage. So you actually end up with like something, this is a million, this is a million, so it's 3 billion pounds, Three point, let's say 4 billion pounds of copper, right? 4 billion, four, well actually, we'll just keep that, pounds to kilos, so 1.7 billion kilos, so to tons, um, so that's a that will be a six, and then to million tons, it's just gonna be very conveniently that. So, one point seven million tons of copper, and that is the current production is twenty million. So you're looking at about eight percent, because the other ones uh, the capacity is twenty two, right? So you're looking at about. 8% of the world. So what I'm saying is by 2025, the additional demand from EVs will account for about 8% of the current world copper um, uh, production capacity. And that's ignoring all the other stuff, uh, infrastructure or anything, maybe, you know, electrification of India, none of that is counted for. Okay, and recycling, and you can basically expect that the recycling will follow price. And 2011 is when copper was expensive. If you look at this thing here, 2011 is when copper is expensive. And obviously, people recycled more. And as copper got cheaper, people recycled less. And at the highest point, they re uh, people recycled 35%. 35% um, of the copper is recycled at the cheaper price. So less than 30% is recycled. So, as, as you would expect, price really works on people. And here's some interesting graphs that you can take a look, but I'm not going to go into that. And uh, yeah, so we just went through a slide deck, and I guess I gave you some. Uh, tidbit that I thought was interesting in, in terms of copper and uh, um, I hope this is useful and if you like it please subscribe and recommend this channel to your friends um, and click like yeah click like see you next time